as you all know igg4 related disorder you know was a big cluster everywhere different different disorders which was then later clubbed into one single entity so what that entity really is an immunological disorder so it is multiple systems and essentially fibrosis and inflammation so we have fibrosis which we call as story form fibrosis pathologically that's called as basket weave pattern so fibrosis and inflammation what is the inflammation as the name suggests it's lymphoplasmacytic infiltration you know plasma cells make antibodies so these antibodies are igg4 right so that is essentially it that you have multiple organs which are getting involved which have inflammation in the form of plasma cells which make igg4 and you have story form fibrosis right so all of these pseudo tumors that we have from head to toe are all now clubbed under igg4 that is what was the unifying link and we see that their serum igg4 is also elevated so actually it's a very easy diagnosis to make all you have to do is send a blood test right so that is is what it does it mimics a bunch of conditions uh, particularly neoplasia and biopsy is usually done from any one organ any one organ you prove you know it kind of brings everything together and the hallmark is excellent response to steroids you may give rituximab in some patients but steroids show a market we will see so many cases where you know within 15 months one year treatment with steroids and the masses huge masses completely just disappear okay so that is what we have to see now this is the essence all we will do is see a lot of cases right so this these are the two criteria which are followed so you can use this for you know theory exam so you have the mayo college criteria which is commonly followed that we learn also which is called hisot so you have histology imaging serology other organ involvement and response to steroid therapy so you can remember hisot right so let's start with histology so in histology as we discussed you want lymphoplasmacytic infiltration and story form fibrosis with igg4 plasma cells imaging now pancreas is the most common so imaging of pancreas remember uh, is is pancreas being the most common organ which is involved that's the classic involvement and everything else comes under other organ so when we talk about pancreas we will discuss you know there is loss of lobulation sausage shaped pancreas you will have a fibrotic rim around it which shows delayed enhancement and you may have pancreatic duct strictures so this is usually diffuse but can be focal as well you will have igg4 levels which are raised i want you to remember this value so igg4 levels more than 140 mg per dl and other organ involvement so the second most common organ involved are bile ducts you have bile structures which could be hilar usually can have distal biliary structure as well parotid lacrimal gland pseudo tumors mediastinal involvement rp fibrosis we will see a head to toe involvement as the class progresses and response to steroid is so marked that it's a diagnostic criteria so this is what is the hisot criteria so either histology or imaging plus serology is needed right so this is how we make a diagnosis of igg4 so this was the mayo clinic criteria we also have a japanese comprehensive criteria more or less similar only so that's clinical serological pathological so yahi hai bas so apart from that one take away here is that igg4 can be normal in almost half of the patients so that makes biopsy a very important tool right when in doubt do a biopsy that's the moral of the story you can make like this diagram don't make such a diagram but make like any head to toe person and you can write what are the involvement so for any multi systemic disorders you can use such a figure method to show what all is happening right so that's how i've arranged this class also you can see how it we will talk about head to toe head and neck then we will talk about thorax we'll talk about abdomen and miscellaneous so that is what you can then make out from that okay so let's start from the top head and neck involvement we divide into four headings so i've written all the theory which you will you know then just read so that it's easier so you have dacryoadenitis and sialadenitis which are your salivary glands you have orbital pseudo tumor you have skull base or synonasal involvement you have thyroiditis which we call as redel's thyroiditis there can be pituitary involvement and there can be pachymeningitis so these are the six headings under which we divide head and neck involvement the manifestation is very simple it mimics tumors or inflammation right 
because it is fibrosclerosing what do you think should be yes it should be low right it should be low on t1 and t2 will it show diffusion restriction yes because it is inflammation it will show diffusion restriction will it show enhancement yes it will show so that is the property throughout you know head to toe we can summarize it as every mass being fibrosclerosing yet inflammatory so we will see t1 t2 signal intensity being low we will see enhancement to be precise enhancement can i say would be progressive because it's trauma it's fibrous tissue so jaise jaise delayed phase aata jayega enhancement increases and because there's a component of inflammation it can show diffusion restriction so that's what everywhere we are going to see so let's see so 40% patients will have dacryoadenitis or sialadenitis two buzzwords mikulix cutner so mikulix disease is lacrimal gland swelling which was previously called mikulix disease cutner's tumors are just parotid enlargement okay so as you can see low t2 low t1 enhancement dds would be you know everywhere you see salivary gland involvement so mumps jogrens lymphoma sarcoid gp uh, basically wegner's right so you can just see these differential diagnosis or bital pseudo tumor so you have lacrimal gland which is most commonly involved and then what do we learn this tumor extraocular muscle but there is no tendinous sparing where in thyroid eye disease we remember coca cola sign here it's not like that here there is complete thickening of the muscles can involve the intraconal compartment right so that is what we will see same thing low signal intensity avid enhancement right and all of your other same same dds almost everywhere lymphoma being the predominant one here right skull base again infiltrative low signal intensity tissue riedel's thyroiditis very hard thyroiditis low low attenuation minimal enhancement can go down into mediastinum thickened pituitary stalk pachymeningitis so all of these are features let's see a few cases come on can you tell me what are we seeing here this is what was previously called as mikulix disease right so this is where you can see bilaterally look at the lacrimal glands can you see how the lacrimal glands are bulky yes so this is dacryoadenitis bilaterally we can see that and look at the avid enhancement all right so this is what is your bilateral lacrimal gland swelling that you can see here okay so that is what we are seeing and the classic symptom in everybody would be you give it one year you know give steroids it regresses okay look at this case again what do you see you see the salivary gland involvement you can see the bilateral parotid enlargement you can see bilateral submandibular enlargement and the ultrasound shows you these very hypoechoic enlargement right which does show you doppler uptake so this is what is your bilateral sialadenitis so this is what we essentially see in every organ let's look at this come on what are you seeing so what does the arrow show that there is this mass which is involving the orbital apex right can i say this is presenting as an orbital apex syndrome yeah so yes this is orbital pseudo tumor but how will you describe it that it goes into the apex and where is it extending is it extending into cavernous sinus it is right so this is extra conal infiltrative soft tissue how will you describe it that this is an extra conal infiltrative soft tissue which is involving the orbital apex and extending into the cavernous sinus you can see that it is also encasing the different muscles particularly the medial rectus here you can see how on t2 it is extending into the floor of orbit also extending out into the infratemporal fossa so it is infiltrative bilateral cavernous sinus more like more on the left side not really right side but yeah cavernous sinus communicates so both the sinuses do look a little bulky so this is orbital pseudo tumor look at this now what do you see again t2 hypo intense it's hypo intense on all sequences so a t2 hypo intense infiltrative intraconal pseudo tumor in this case you can see it encasing the optic nerve look, look at this very very infiltrative mass lesion so this is how pseudo tumor can present yes there is resultant proptosis axial proptosis in this patient look at this this is where you can see the muscles being bulky and is there any tendinous sparing 
not really so this is where the muscles are involved right and you can see even the contralateral lacrimal gland is showing enhancement so look at so this is how your orbital pseudotumor appears isme kya dikh raha hai so look at this you can see how bilateral the parotid glands are bulky yes you can see bilateral parotid glands being bulky and you can also see how there is uptake on the pet scan right so this is something which is going to involve the parotid gland pet will show uptake because of inflammation look at this this is a nice case look look at how there is this diffuse infiltrative nasopharyngeal involvement okay you can see the two longus coli muscles are also infiltrated so this is your base of skull involvement or nasopharyngeal involvement where you just see infiltrative look at how hypo intense it is right very very t2 hypo intense showing enhancement on ct so contrast enhanced is the most important sequence hai na isme to pata bhi nahi lag raha t1 t2 pe that there is a mass right so when you see the enhancement diffuse symmetrical enhancement so this is what is your nasopharyngeal involvement involving the longus coli muscles and also having associated mucosal thickening so paranasal sinus involvement bhi hota hai as we saw so paranasal sinus nasopharyngeal infiltrative tissue so this is skull base involvement ye dekho it is presenting now as thickening extra dural can you see how the complete dura is thickened and presenting as an extra dural mass causing spinal cord compression npc can't be so symmetrical right so even if it causes bony erosion it is a diffusely symmetrical infiltrative soft tissue any carcinoma is going to erode into the bones and it it will be asymmetric much more destructive this is not so destructive it's slowly progressive right so symmetricity progression response to steroids igd4 right all of these points ultimately you biopsy you have to biopsy any one site to confirm right so this is where it, there is a pachy meningeal thickening presenting as an extra dural mass look at this very interesting case this one we are seeing these bilateral you know enhancing lesions along the temporal aspects you do the ultrasound what are you seeing what is this seeing some sort of sclerosing hyperechoic tissue and you are seeing the blood vessel and how is the blood vessel you can see how there is yin and yang kind of flow in this blood vessel what does that indicate that all of these are pseudo aneurysms right so all of these are actually pseudo aneurysms which have formed in the temporal arteries so this is where you know you will consider other differential diagnosis like vasculitis so this is where you are having this infiltrative soft tissue which is causing you know blood vessels to have pseudo aneurysm so that is what we can see here that these are all temporal artery pseudo aneurysms because of the inflammatory tissue you know how in pancreatitis we get pseudo aneurysms because aspas inflammation hai so that is what is happening here that you are having pseudo aneurysms secondary to inflammation right so that's a very like rare case what do you see here so hard swelling clinically batayenge ki hard rock just a stony hard swelling and you do an ultrasound you see this infiltrative thickening hypoechoic when you do the ct again very infiltrative encasing into the uh, carotid artery yes so this is redel's thyroiditis see how it's encasing the brachiocephalic vessels the common carotid vessels and is it extending into the mediastinum as well so it's extending into mediastinum when you see pet uptake for a minute you will be like is this cancer right so it mimics cancer and then what do you see that it resolves right upon treatment you can see marked reduction of the mass and size so that is the hallmark gives steroids and see it just disappears so this is a case of redel's thyroiditis which is then extending into mediastinum okay so that is the pattern everywhere like at the first look you will think it is cancer pet will show uptake and then it resolves without any treatment except steroids so this is head and neck right six headings we did what were the six headings that we did you can have orbital involvement you can have parotid gland involvement you can have nasopharynx and skull base you can have pachy meningitis you can have pituitary stalk thickening lungs you have four different patterns so affects 13% so not very very common 
you have solid nodules which mimic cancer completely they are fdg avid they have speculated margin so everything jo humne cancer mein padha hai yahan milta hai you may get ggos you may get interstitial thickening and you may get bronchovascular thickening as well so you have speculated ggo interstitial bronchovascular involvement apart from that to complete thorax you can have aortitis and aneurysm very very important so any thickening more than 2 mm mimics vasculitis coronary artery ki thickening ho sakti hai breast involvement can cause sclerosing mastitis this is very important comes as a long case so this comes as a palpable lump and then you don't see a mass what it presents as is non mass enhancement so mr karte hain usually non mass enhancement ill defined asymmetry ill defined lesion so basically there is a lump when you feel it but all you see is just infiltration so that is how it presents in the breast and histopath is mandatory here so dds are carcinoma sclerosing adenoma डायबिटिक मेस्टोपैथी तो ये इंपॉर्टेंट है ठीक है ये डीडी में याद रखो नॉन मास एनहेंसमेंट के ठीक है सो दीज आर ऑल द थोरासिक इन्वॉल्वमेंट सो पल्मनरी इंटू फोर कार्डियोवास्कुलर कॉरोनरी आर्ट्री ब्रेस्ट